Well, now you're able to pray all the prayers that are in the rosary. And now we move our attention to the traditional Latin Mass. Today, I'm going to walk you through the seven easiest and most common responses that we make in the traditional Latin Mass. Now, in a future lesson, we'll talk about the differences between the three kinds of Latin Masses. There's the Solemn High Mass, there's the High Mass or the Misa Cantata, and then there's the private mass or the low mass. And traditionally in the low or private mass, the lady do not make responses. Um, and in the Misa Cantata and the Psalm I Mass, we do chant with the choir the responses. So today you're going to learn these responses. And also, just as the mass is going on, whether it's a low mass, a high mass, a solemn high mass, you'll know what is being said and hopefully you can join in. So let's take a look at the seven most common and easy responses in the Latin Mass. So the first one is Dominus Vobiscum et Cum Spiritu Tuo. Dominus Vobiscum et Cum Spiritu Tuo. Very easy. The old joke that altar boys used to say is, what's God's phone number? And the answer was, et Cum Spiritu Tuo. Kind of a silly juvenile joke. But Dominus Vobiscum means the Lord, y'all, you plural, with, the Lord be with y'all, plural. The Lord be with you, as we translate it properly. And then the response is, et cum spiritu tuo, and with spirit yours. So everyone needs to know, Dominus fulbiscum, et cum spiritu tuo. Basic. And probably everyone watching already knows that one. Even people who have not been to a Latin Mass at least know this one and how to respond. Uh, the next one comes from one of the uh, responses that the server makes when the priest is doing the prayers at the foot of the altar. But this is also used in blessings outside of Mass. It's something that if you're in a, a Latin Mass parish or you're around other sacraments uh, that are done in Latin, you're going to hear this one. And it's adjutorium nostrum in nomine domine. Adjutorium means help nostrum ours in the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. In the response that the server makes, or if you make, or whatever the context is, sometimes when a bishop's here, you'll hear this. And the response is, qui fecit celum et terum. Who fecit made heaven and earth. So it goes, our help is in the name of the Lord. And then the response is, who made heaven and earth. So the part you need to know is, qui fecit celum et terum. Boom. The next one is also from the prayers of the foot of the altar, but you'll hear it in other contexts. Uh, for example, in the divine office. Domine exaudia ratione meum et clamor meas ad te veniat. Literally, Lord, hear out my prayer. In, in Latin, there's audi and there's ex audi. Here we have ex audi and it's it's not exact, but in English you can hear, like you say, do you hear me? And do you hear me out? We, we use the exact same um, uh, format when we say, hear him out. So here we're saying, Lord, hear out my prayer. Domine exaudia rationem meum. And then the response is, it, this is from the Psalms, et clamor meus ad te veniat. And my cry shall come to thee. Lord, hear my prayer, and my cry shall come to thee. Now, the next part is great. This is the Kyrie eleison. Uh, we'll learn about this later when we, when we study the Roman rite. But St. Gregory the Great, in the around the year 600, notes that there's a major difference between the Roman church and the church in Constantinople on the Kyrie. As you know, in the Eastern Church, they say Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, you know, three times, nine times, 40 times, 100 times. Gregory the Great in Rome says the difference between the Romans and the Greeks on the Kyrie eleison, because we're both saying this in Greek, this is not Latin. Kyrie eleison comes from Kyrie, which means, O Lord, and eleison, have mercy. The difference, Gregory the Great says, is the Greeks say it all in unison. 
But the Romans have the priest, the clergy, and the lay people alternating it, which is exactly what we do in this current day. There's the alteration of Kyrie, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison. And then the other difference is that we add into the middle Christ eleison. So the first three are for God the Father. The second three, which are announced Christ eleison, are for Christ, the second person of the Trinity. And then the final three are for the Holy Spirit. So these are addressed to the three persons of the Trinity. Each one gets three, and they're alternating. They weave back and forth. And this goes back at least to Gregory the Great, maybe probably even before. So it goes, Kyrie eleison, and then that's the priest. And then we say, Kyrie eleison, and then the priest, Kyrie eleison. And then it switches to us, Christe eleison. Christe eleison, Christe eleison, and then the priest, Kyrie eleison, us, Kyrie eleison, and then Kyrie eleison. And when it's chanted, that final Kyrie eleison is, is more um, beautiful. It kind of lets you know that that's the last one, otherwise we would just keep going and going and going. There might be that 10th Kyrie thrown on there. Uh, but this is really beautiful. It's one of my favorite parts of the Latin Mass. And uh, you'll notice if it's a Misa Cantata or a Psalm High Mass, while this is being chanted, uh, you'll notice that the clergy continue to go on and and do their functions at the altar. It's a really, really neat detail in the Roman Rite. Okay, so the next uh, common response that you'll need to know is before and after the gospel. Before the gospel is Gloria Tibi Domine, glory to you, O Lord. And then after the gospel, it's Laus Tibi Christe, praise to you, Christ. The Novus Ordo translates this kind of wrong. Uh, how do they do it? Glory be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to you. I think it's Lord Jesus Christ. I haven't been in a while, so I can't remember. But they have a, they add a little bit in there. But in the Old Latin, it's just Gloria Tibi Domine, Laus Tibi Christe. And then there is the great back and forth before the Roman canon, before the Sanctus, 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 the Holy, Holy, Holy. Um, the priest be, finishes up the offertory per omnia secula seculorum through all ages of ages. We say, Amen. Then he says, Dominus Vobiscum et cum spiritu tua. We already know that one. Then, Sursum Corda. Corda means hearts. Sursum means upward, above. So he's really saying hearts above. That's what he says, hearts above. Shows already our predilection for the heart, which is very Hebraic as the center of man where the hearts, I mean, sorry, where the thoughts are found is in the heart. So here he says, hearts up, hearts above, sursum corda. And then we respond, habemus ad dominum. Now, in English, it's often we lift them to the Lord, but that's not what the Latin says. Look at the Latin, habemus ad dominum. We have them to the Lord. Habemus, not lift. There's no lifting here. We have them to the Lord. So the priest says, hearts above, and we say, literally, we have them to the Lord. It's sort of we pointed them already. We have them honed in on God. And then the priest says, gracias agamos domin." Sorry, gracias agamos domino Deo nostro. Gracias agamos means let us give thanks. Literally, let us give graces. Let us lead graces to the Lord our God. And then the people say, dignum et justum s. And here's on that dignum, you have that G-N, which reminds us to do the onion sound. Nasal. If it were classical Latin, we would say dignum. But in the church ecclesiastical Latin, dignum. So we say dignum et justum est. So that's that part. And then, of course, you need to know the outro, the end, which in the Latin Mass, this comes before the final blessing, which you need to be aware of. But the priest or the deacon chants, ita misa est deo gratias. All right, so this means a lot of things. It means that the sacrifice is sent. Misa est, it's already sent uh, to the Father. But it also means that the assembly is also dismissed. 
and sent. So it has a double meaning here. Deo gratias, thanks be to God. So those are pretty easy. You know, these are the kind of things that you could spend 30 minutes, maybe, you know, print out this note and spend 30 minutes and you will be able to vocally participate in a high mass for the rest of your life. Pretty cool. Now you can add to this a few other things. For example, you'd want to add to this list as you get better. You'd want to add the confidior. I confess to Almighty God that happens at the foot of the altar and also before Holy Communion. You would also want to add the Agnus Dei, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And then you'd also want to add the Domini non sub dignus, Lord, I am not worthy. That's said three times before receiving communion. So those are a little bit longer, a little bit more complicated, but very easy to add to your repertoire. And again, even if you don't know Latin, you never studied Latin, you can look at these words. I mean, let's just pick one here. Before the gospel, Gloria Tibi Domine. You don't have to be a Latin scholar to know what that means. Glory to you, Lord. Laus Tibi Christe. You know, we know what, uh, you know, I, I laud him. That means to praise. Praise to you, Christ. You know, Kyrie eleison is Greek. It's not Latin, which is interesting to show that the Latin Mass is not 100% Latin. It has Greek in it. Also has some Hebrew in there. For example, the words Alleluia and Amen are Hebrew. So again, super easy. This should make you less um, worried about the Latin Mass, more at home and give you these little little bitty anchors to attach, uh, attach yourself to what's going on in the Latin Mass. Very easy. And again, a five-year-old can do these things. Well, thanks so much for following along. I hope these seven responses help you uh, in your, your journey or your continued journey in participating in the traditional Latin Mass. And we'll see you in more videos to come. Thanks for being a member of the new St. Thomas Institute. Godspeed. Sorry.